So I'm talking about uh, Stone's FPSO construction update and strategies enhancing FPSO performance and safety. So for me, there's a couple of things that have been really important in building the team on Stones. I joined Stones as project manager in the middle of 2010. And uh, like we talked about in one of the streams yesterday, you're not, you're not given a good team, uh, but you build a good team. And I, and I really feel like uh, I've built a great team on Stones. I, I like the way how they've uh, responded to challenges, and we've had numerous challenges. Uh, so this, this picture of the Ferrari team, I, I think, amplifies what, uh, what we're trying to do on Stones. We're trying to work together. We're also very focused on safety. So for me, it's, it's working together, and it's, uh, it's safety. Uh, you can read this if you like, but basically what it says is don't believe anything I say looking forward. <laughs> okay, so this is what I plan to talk about. So a little bit about the FPSO market, Shell strategy, uh, and then I'll get a lot more into the final two, which is a bit of the construction overview for the Turritella, uh, which is the Stones FPSO, and then I'll talk a bit about the safety journey. Normally I would talk about safety at the beginning, but I have talked in this forum, at least in Singapore, about safety extensively, so I, I, I'm talking about safety at the, I'm closing with safety. Okay, so a little bit about Shell. I think uh, most of you know that Shell and BG have uh, formed ranks as of uh, February the 15th. So that, uh, that definitely is a, is a step change for us. I'll talk about that more in my, my closing remarks uh, at the end of the day. But uh, Shell continues its track record in project delivery. So we've had the Mars B project recently delivered in the Gulf of Mexico. Stones will be the next uh, first oil and, and, and major project in the Gulf of Mexico. We also have projects uh, around the world. With the combination with BG, it's gonna be a real step change in uh, Brazil. As, as those of you that are familiar with BG, and probably most of you are more familiar with them than I am, they have a lot of uh, developments offshore Brazil. So I'll show a, a slide in my closing comments about what it means for Shell in terms of FPSOs, but basically it means a lot more FPSOs, it means a lot more Brazil, and it means a lot more NOV work. Shell is, is m very much used to operating its assets. So if you think about the tension leg platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, those are all Shell owned and operated. For these FPSOs offshore Brazil, it'll be much more about uh, NOVs. Uh, you can see that we're, we're around the world, so um, more, more and more opportunities, and, and you can see how deep water is growing. So the acquisition of BG was very much about deep water and integrated gas. Now, the complexity of projects continues to grow. We go into deeper and deeper waters, more and more frontier plays, and certainly Stones is a frontier play. I, I can tell you we know very little about the reservoir at Stones. We're going to give it a go. Uh, very complex uh, fluid properties, and uh, these projects are expensive, so we need to get them right. Um, maybe it's worth spending the money, but uh, we, we also need to get the return with the, uh, the production. So this is the march uh, into deep water. Started with cognac back in the late 70s, and Stones, once it's installed, will be the world's deepest floating production system in 9,500 feet of water, 2,900 meters. A little bit about Shell's FPSO strategy. So we look at whether we need storage or no storage. Uh, mostly in the Gulf of Mexico, we've had tension leg platforms. We haven't really needed the uh, storage. The oil has been piped to an extensive network. Uh, but if we need storage facilities, it might be a small FPSO, a medium FPSO, a large FPSO. Stones is in the category of a medium FPSO. It's a Suez Max size tanker. For the small and the medium FPSOs, it's very much about functional specifications that leverage the experience of the industry. So we haven't come down with a bunch of uh, pre prescriptive uh, specifications. We've used functional specifications. But I will say within Shell, we are of two minds. So something like Bonga Southwest, which is a very large FPSO that is meant to be developed offshore uh, Nigeria, we will use prescriptive specifications because that's a large FPSO. So we, got, we got really have a foot kind of in, in both camps. Now, FPSOs do provide uh, a lot of flexibility. Uh, this, this group probably knows that uh, pretty well. But uh, you go to a contractor who knows what they're doing in terms of operating FPSOs. It means that uh, we don't have to build up that, that expertise within our company. The contractor owns it, leases it. Uh, means there's some flexibility. So on stones, what that means is if the reservoir, which we don't know very well, turns out to not be very good, well, it's, it's a lease, the FPSO can move somewhere else. Let's say uh, the, 
the production is great, it's tremendous. Well, we might need a bigger FPSO. So the, the, there's that flexibility with an FPSO. There's the opportunity to upgrade. Uh, the FPSO is, is disconnectable, so it can go to a, a shipyard uh, near shore. And there's uh, flexibility at a competitive cost. So where is Stones? I think you already figured it out. It's in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it's in uh, 9,500 feet of water. The 7,500 feet of water is actually an escarpment. So there's an escarpment that, that comes down. So 7,500 feet of water at the top, 9,500 feet of water at the bottom. 200 miles south of New Orleans, and Shell is the operator and holds 100% uh, of the, uh, the leasehold. We do have a couple of neighbors out in this new frontier. So Petrobras uh, has put in Cascade Chinook. So Cascade Chinook is a small FPSO. Stones is a medium FPSO, and then our, our friends on the other side, Jackson and Malo, that's Chevron, they went with the big bat. Now, it's not a big FPSO, but it is a big uh, semi. So Petrobras and Shell have gone with a bit more of a phased approach, whereas Chevron has said, okay, we're going to go out there with a the full development uh, right away. And this is what uh, Stones is meant to look like when it's uh, fully in, in place. So uh, it is two drill centers. It is a... FPSO, oil is exported via tanker. We do have uh, risers, umbilicals, subsea equipment. Uh, there are eight wells, two wells that'll be drilled, that have already been drilled and completed, ready for first oil this year. And we'll have six additional wells and an artificial lift system that will be installed uh, in, in the next, uh, in the years to come. There you can see the escarpment. If I had a pointer, I'd point it out, but uh, it's basically the uh, part just above the drill center. So. Locating those drill centers was challenging, and understanding that slope is also challenging because we worry about slope stability, right? Also, I'll, I'll tell you the, the reserves for stones are right in, the, uh, right in that uh, slope of that escarpment. So that, that makes it a challenge as well for, for well paths. Uh, a little more detail, uh, and this points out a little bit of the new technology. So definitely the work on the disconnectable turret, and I'll, I'll talk more about that in this talk, is, is new technology. 15K subsea trees is new technology. The artificial lift system is new technology. The uh, steel lazy wave risers, that's new technology. First time that steel lazy wave risers have been attached to a disconnectable FPSO. And this shows you at the bottom a little bit of the phasing. So two wells before first oil and six wells in the artificial lift. And uh, phase two, yeah, we, we would love to have a phase two, we'd love to have a phase three on stones, but we need to know a little bit more about the reservoir before we can commit to that. And there's a little more. So there are a lot of reserves. Uh, we're, we're thinking uh, over a million and a half barrels in place. Recoverables is greater than 250 million barrels for the first, uh, first phase. And there you see some of the rest of what I think I've already talked about, most of that. So the point is there's a, there's a lot there. How much of it can we get out? So what, what are the recoveries? What are the recoveries? So that when we talk about phase two and phase three of stones, it's about increasing the, the uh, recoverables. Okay, so here's a, a, a graphic of the FPSO on the uh, left. Uh, main contractor is uh, SBM. And in Singapore, Keppel, Dynamac, and Extern were uh, subcontractors to SBM in building the FPSO. On the right shows you the, uh, the internals of the turret. So there's a heave comp system. Again, I don't have a pointer, but uh, just to give you an idea, there's, there's structural connectors that hold it in place. There's a heave comp system. Uh, the buoy is the yellow part at the bottom. I'll talk about it in a little more detail in further slides, but I just want to give you an overview on, on this slide. A lot going on inside the turret. So here's another slide about uh, new technology. So a disconnectable uh, turret with steel lazy wave risers. We have uh, horizontal artificial lift pumps, oil exported via tanker. These are high pressure, high temperature wells. You can see the numbers there. Uh, the trees are 15K trees, I already talked about that. Polyester moorings, and you can see some graphics down there at the bottom and another graphic of the, uh, the disconnectable buoy. So I showed the march into deep water for uh, shell projects. Uh, SPM has a similar slide, so this slide is courtesy of SPM. And it shows the FPSOs as they've marched into deep water. So the FPSOs have followed a similar path in terms of becoming deeper, more complex, 
Uh, on the right is, is a look at how the swivel stack size has increased. I mean, we're up to the, the size of an eight-story building. So things are becoming uh, more complex. And on the upper right, you see, as we talk about these things on stones, stones is characterized as difficult, deep, and distant. And I, and I think you can see that. There's a lot of difficulty with the, uh, the technology. There's a lot of difficulty with the uncertainty in the reservoir. A lot of difficulty in drilling the wells. Uh, it's deep and uh, it's distant. So 200 miles uh, from New Orleans, it's a long helicopter ride. And if the turret is uh, complex, uh, the buoy is big. So the buoy has to support in 9,500 feet of water the moorings that hold the FPSO in place and also the, the risers. So you think about 9,500 feet of water and that, uh, that tension in those, in those lines and pipes, it's quite a load. And so the buoy becomes pretty big. Uh, if you can see it there, the biggest mammal is a blue whale. So this is what it would look like if a blue whale was swimming beside the buoy. And you might not see it as well, but there's an arrow in the, in the middle of the buoy that shows a diver. So just, uh, just to put it in perspective, this, this is a very large buoy. And this is what it would look like if Stones was moored over Singapore. <laughs> so it's got quite, a, quite an extent. There you see the, the lazy wave risers. 